the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 324 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. We are in the thick of 2023. We have gotten into the new year. We are moving on into February, and I am so excited that you're here with me. I am continuing our series that we have been talking about that goes along with my book, Influencer Entrepreneurs, the four-step framework for building your audience, growing your business, and making money online. If you haven't already grabbed the free workbook that goes along with it, please make sure that you do. It is linked in the show notes as well as linked in your podcasting app. We try to make this as easy as possible for you all. Now, I also want you to be aware that not only do we make sure that you have a, obviously, the audio version to be able to listen on the podcast, but we also have a full blog post because I, like you, are also trying to attract an audience. So I'm making sure that I'm paying attention to keyword research and SEO just like you are. So if you would prefer to read the blog post, you absolutely can do that. It is always linked in every one of my episodes in the notes in your podcasting app. As always, I always appreciate it when you guys take the time to leave a rating and review. If you haven't done so, it is super simple inside your podcasting app, especially if you're using Apple. Just scroll down to the bottom of my podcast. You will see a spot that says rating and review. All you have to do is hit the number of stars and then leave a quick rating. Let me know what you are thinking as far as the review portion of it. Recently, Karen Rogers, who is someone that is in my audience, actually a member of my membership site as well, left a review and said how much she was enjoying the podcast. That means so much to me because in this day and age where we don't get to hear from people, it is often hard to understand what is hitting home and what is actually giving you strategies to move forward. All right, so today I really want to dive into to make sure you know who you are talking to. This is one of the most important things that I always talk about that you need to understand the problem that you are solving. When I hosted IEA Summit in the beginning of January, I talked about there were three things we were focusing on. We were focusing on SEO. We were making sure that we understood the importance of growing an email list and how to actually engage with it. And then the third was to know the problem you were solving for your audience. So in order to know that problem, you have to know your person, your avatar. So if you have not created a blog avatar yet, I would highly recommend hopping over and check out how to do that. We talk about what is a blog avatar and how to actually create it. We're going to link to that, obviously, in the show notes as well. All right, so let's talk about to make sure you know who you are talking to. When it comes to being authentic, one of the largest hurdles I see clients struggle with is knowing who they're talking to. I'm sure you're wondering how this has anything to do with authenticity. So I want you to stay with me because remember, we've been talking about authenticity the last couple weeks. We often want to include everyone. We don't want to leave anyone out because we think, what if they could be a potential client? So instead of making our messaging clear, we put our inauthentic messages where we're trying to reach the masses. We create a vague message that doesn't come across as authentic because we're not connecting with anyone. For example, I have a client who has a successful in-person health coaching business. She created a food block to complement the coaching business and to provide her clients with recipes that fit into the recommendations she makes for their healthy lifestyle. She takes traditional recipes and makes them healthier by making them dairy-free. Because she wants her blog to be a success, she's been trying to attract everyone and doesn't want to niche down or state that the recipes were all dairy free. She isn't maliciously being inauthentic, but when you try to cast a wide net, you'll never get true raving fans that will rely on you. My recommendation is that she state that she creates dairy free recipes to help women stay healthy in their busy lives. That way people know exactly what to expect and the women looking for dairy free recipes are likely to become her raving fans. It's okay to repel some people people and attract others. You are not meant to serve every single person on this earth. Don't roll your eyes. I'm obviously exaggerating a bit here, but in all honesty, don't be afraid to talk to who you are meant to talk to. I'm wondering what this looks like. 
Let's see. So if I offered interior design services where my expertise was modern design with clean lines and lots of white, they, I shouldn't be targeting or creating content for moms with toddlers. For example, that modern interior designer wouldn't want to go and share about how the metal bar stool with no back is the perfect width for a high chair, even though it is five feet off the ground and will only be attached to a four by four piece of metal. Some of you might be hesitating and thinking, wait, I have that crazy sister-in-law that has all white furniture, tons of breakable modern decor out, and she has a toddler. Yep, I get it. Seriously, my sister-in-law is literally that person. How she does it and keeps her sanity, I have no idea. And she even has three boys. Here's the thing, though. She's a rarity, an outlier. As an interior designer, you should target or create content for an audience with older children or even no children at all. Your content should be about how those metal bar stools are perfect for a dinner party because you can fit six along the high top section of the counter rather than just three because the seats are four by four in size. It's likely that my sister-in-law could still find you, but you do not want to target her by speaking to busy moms with toddlers. Through this part on authenticity, we've talked about how important it is to give our audience an opportunity to decide if they know, like, and trust us. In part one, we shared about our positioning and how it provides us with stories to connect with our audience. By taking what we've learned so far, we should understand that our stories give our audience the opportunity to connect. We often think that our potential market is everyone that could potentially like our product or service, but we have to know who we are talking to and be okay with attracting a smaller audience. This is especially true in the beginning. As you grow and potentially hire a team of people, you might hire someone who understands the other demographic that you're trying to reach. So let's head back to our modern interior designer for a second. The potential audience is people without toddlers, so you're either targeting an older demographic whose children are grown or a younger demographic who doesn't have children quite yet. In the example I gave above, the designer was older, so it is likely that she would look to attract a similar demographic. Her content on Instagram would be about dinner parties and styling of her kid-free home. If she tried to show ways in which her home could be styled if she had a toddler, there'd be a lot of eye-rolling from the moms with kids, and the audience without kids would wonder why she's not speaking to them. Just think about how you feel when your mother-in-law offers you a suggestion about how to raise your kids. It's likely you feel like times have changed and the suggestions she's giving may have worked 30 years ago, but they don't work anymore. Just remember that in order for your content and messaging to come across as authentic, you want to speak to your specific audience, not everyone. So in order to help you do this, one of the exercises now, of course, in the free workbook that you can receive is going to walk you through how to make sure that you create this, but it's about creating a blog avatar. How do we go about and do that? We're also going to link in the show notes where you can actually go through and read or listen to the podcast episode, which is episode 80, where I walked you through what is a blog avatar and how to create one, because it's an important piece. You have to know who it is that you're trying to speak to. You can't simply expect to be able to say to me, Jenny, I don't solve a problem for my audience. I just inspire. I just create recipes that attract them, or I just do DIYs or decor or whatever it is that your niche is in. You have to go below the surface level of inspiring. And in order to do that, you have to know who you're speaking to. You have to know who that ideal person is. And in that episode that I'm talking about where I walk you through what is an avatar and how to create one, I walk you through the avatar that I had for the Melrose family. And how even though I was a lifestyle blog, I was able to get deep and understand what the problem was that I was solving for my audience because I had that one avatar that I knew I was speaking to that was going to be able to help me along my way to make sure that I was staying in my lane within my content and also making sure that I was trying to attract people just like her. You guys, if you haven't already grabbed the workbook, please make sure that you do. This is obviously a series that we've been doing for a couple weeks now. You can always go back and listen to it. You can also not only grab my workbook for free, but my book is on Amazon and can get delivered right to your doorstep. So if you haven't already grabbed my book, I'd love it if you did so. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 